Once again, Happy Feast Day is the exaltation of the cross. And that's a big deal because the cross is our number one symbol of faith. It's our number one symbol of faith, even though we have a ton of other symbols that we use. We've got the waters of baptism. We've got the dove representing the Holy Spirit. We've got the, the Jesus fish, which we normally see on the backs of cars these days. Uh, we have the Alpha and the Omega, symbolizing the eternal nature of Christ. The list goes on. But the cross is our number one symbol. It summarizes our life of faith, even the parts that don't directly involve the crucifixion of Jesus. And in addition to that, we have a lot of ways that we can use the cross as a symbol of faith. In other words, we have a number of different styles. There's the, uh, the simple cross, which I'm wearing, just, you know, just two lines, one vertical, one horizontal, mainly representing the simplicity of faith. You got faith in Jesus, every other detail is secondary. We've also got a Jerusalem cross. Jerusalem cross is a square cross with four little ones in the corners, representing the four gospels and the four corners of the earth to which the gospels go to. For those of you who, like me, have a spiritual connection with Ireland, there is the Celtic cross, which is a, uh, a normal shaped cross, normally made with either swirly designs or interwoven bands in a ring around the intersecting point of the cross. And, oh, the richness and the history of the Celtic cross is, is marvelous. The possible interpretations of what a Celtic cross actually represents, pretty much limitless. Some people own or wear a Celtic cross as a sign of their Irish heritage, uh, some people prefer a Celtic cross because of the beauty of creation with Christ our Lord. And with the ring representing endlessness, it can also represent the eternal nature of Christ. Again, the list goes on. So, with that primer, I want to take a little break from crosses for a minute for a story. Once upon a time, there was a young boy, eh, maybe six or so, and his father had to go for a very long business trip. He'd be gone for an entire year, no visits home, and only the occasional phone call to break up the months. Well, after about two months, the boy really started missing his father. And he tried a couple of things to make himself feel better and to you know, remind himself of his father. So the first thing he tried was eating familiar foods, the foods he loved eating with his dad. So he tried uh, chocolate chip pan pancakes on Saturday morning. And that didn't work. Because it just felt lonely to eat his beloved foods without his dad. The next thing he tried was he tried sneaking into his dad's office for that familiar smell of leather, books, and stale coffee, which is obviously what dads smell like. Maybe some Old Spice there, too. I don't know. Uh, that didn't work well either. Uh, it did for a couple of times, but then the room just started smelling empty. You know, he got used to it, and it didn't comfort him the way he was hoping. Finally, he actually snuck into his dad's closet and started trying on some of his clothes. And that didn't work at all. I mean, none of them fit him. <laughs> uh, and his mom put, that, uh, put an end to that right away. It was about that point that the mother started understanding how badly the boy was missing his father. And what she did was she went and she printed off a nice picture of him and his dad together. And he gave it to him, saying, you know, you can keep this in your room, you can take it to school, whatever. And I gotta tell you, that picture really helped him. 
just to see his dad and his facial features. That's all his memory needed, and his mind was able to do the rest. And the final mo months of that year were much easier than the first months. And the point of this story is that, as people, we need concrete things to remind us of what we care about and what's important to us. Sometimes something abstract will work. You know, the smell of your dad's office. Or remembering a movie, not because the movie was good, but because you watched it with your best friends and you had such a great time watching it. That works sometimes. More often than not, we need something more solid. We need a picture of our loved one. We need to remember our greatest movie because of that scene where you, you've memorized every line of dialogue because it's perfect. As human beings, we want details. We want details we can point to. This is what I like and this is why. Details that other people can see. And I'm telling you all this for the cross because there's one final distinction I want to make. There are two kinds of crosses in the world and only one is explicitly Catholic. <coughs> Crosses thank you, either have Jesus' body on it, or they don't. And it's Catholic, probably Catholic, if it's got the, the body of Christ on it. There are some exceptions out there, but overall, if you see the body of Christ on a cross, it's safe to assume it's a Catholic one. Protestants, at least the ones I've spoken to, have the bare cross. Why? because it is a reminder of Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the reality of the resurrection. Christ is not on the cross. He's risen. There's no reason to mourn him. Let us celebrate. Alleluia, Christ has risen. That's what the bare cross represents. For Catholics, we've got Christ in full view. We have a tendency to remember the passion and death of Christ. So in a word, Protestants focus on the divine. Catholics focus on the human. And to be clear, it is so nice that we have both of these options. These are both good. And my favorite cross to wear on my lapel, on my jacket, is a good old-fashioned plain Lutheran cross. It was part of my uniform in the Lutheran Hospital of Indiana when I was a chaplain. So it's a sign of my faith and it's sentimental. But the, the image of Christ on a cross is so magnificently powerful. And we need that because gazing upon Christ helps us to remember that Christ is near, that Christ is among us. Without the body of Christ, we can sometimes forget that. We can start thinking of God as someone distant that Christ is gazing down upon us, far away from heaven. And I don't for an instant believe that's healthy or helpful, to think of God as distant and far away. Like, no, Christ walked the earth. Christ gave everything he had for us, right down to his sweat and his tears and his blood. And if we remember that, we can sometimes, in our harder moments in life, see ourselves on the cross in his place. It's almost like we're nailed to the other side of the cross, and Christ is mirroring whatever turmoil might be in our hearts. To look upon Christ is to know him just a little bit better. And the image of Christ on a cross is a powerful and holy symbol indeed.